Hello folks, welcome to Hawcroft Fishery and another practice. Now, we're at, I'm going to say, is my favourite winter venue today. Um, we fish a teams of four winter league here at Hallcroft every year and it's just brilliant. 72 anglers, I think there's 18 teams of four um, and a really, really competitive, good standard of angler as well. Um, my team, Catch More Media, we've been very lucky. We've won this event um, well, every year. We've, we've fished it bar COVID year. Well, unfortunately, the league had to be cancelled after a couple of rounds, but it's been very, very kind to us. Um, but it's never been as close in the league as it is this year. Now, last weekend was round seven. Uh, there's eight rounds in total. So this round, this next weekend coming up, is the final round of the league. Um, and it's super, super close. There's about four teams who could actually win it, depending on what happens on Sunday. So I thought I'd better come down, have a cheeky little practice. I just wanted to have a look at a couple of methods that I'm going to say aren't the strongest part of my game. Um, pellets being the first one, which is what I'm fishing right now. And also, there's a little tactic on the short pole, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. It's almost a, a way of fishing up the slope, which has won quite a lot of the matches this year. So we're going to have a little look at that as well. Um, obviously, a winter league like this, it spans five months of the year, November through to March. Um, the tactics vary massively. In the coldest weather, we find ourselves fishing baits like bloodworm. Um, you know, that's really a key method when it's cold. And then as it goes milder, things change. As I said, a short pole becomes much more a part of things. Um, I personally love fishing casters on a short pole. That's probably my sort of strongest suit, I'm going to say, here at Hawcroft. And I think as a team method, it's brilliant because the nice thing with uh, that sort of that sort of approach is you're constantly putting fish in the net. Whether it's roach, little skimmers, or the bigger skimmers which you do catch on that line as well. It's a very, very safe way to fish and it's a way of fishing that when it when it works, when you get good, you know, when you get bites on it, it all but guarantees you good team points because you've got to catch 20 to one say 30 pounds of mixed fish, which is worth mega points but as you can see look at these fish i'm catching here now that's on pellets bang in the bottom lip this is the sort of method i'm going to say and these are the sort of fish that win the matches though now might seem a bit contradictory but i don't always think that pellets is the best team method i think as i say very often just getting regular bites filling your net with everything that swims is the way to go but in the early rounds and in the later rounds, like we're going into this weekend, you can't deny the effectiveness of this bait. And that's why I wanted to come and practice this boat, because it's not something I do an awful lot here at Allcroft. Um, and it's something that I wanted to try and perfect. So we'll have a little look at the tactics we use on this, what I'm doing today, and we'll see, hopefully, on Sunday, yet again, I'll have a camera behind me and we'll, we'll look at how the match goes. We'll see if we can put into good use any of the tactics that we've used today, any of the lessons that we've learnt today, and hopefully get a good result for the team. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm fishing on just under 30 metres of pole. I've got a little Guru sprinkle pot on there. Um, the rig is a 4x14's Richie Wilson dink. And I'm just fishing on the back edge of the feed. Now, I'm not going to beat about the bush here, folks. I've had a bit of a lesson in pellet fishing these last two or three weeks, both by going down on the Meadowlands Festival, where I was a couple of weeks ago, and also here at Hawcroft, to be honest, because uh, it has been a very very good little spell over the last few weeks for this pellet fishing and if you'd have asked me a month ago how i approached pellets it would have been quite different to what i'm doing here and now so i'll tell you why i'm doing what i'm doing 
my young mate Rob Swan, he won the match on this method on Sunday, this last round gone. Luckily for us, he was actually standing in, in our team because Matt had to miss the round with being at the big one show. Denty was away as well and Geldart couldn't fish. So we had a bit of an array of, uh, I'm going to call them super subs actually. We were very lucky. We had Lee Kerry, we had Rob Swan and we had Will Freeman fishing for us. So three really good standings. And as I said, Rob managed to win the match fishing pellets. A little bit like this. And interestingly, I also drew next to, on Sunday, a brilliant Hawcroft regular here, like a chap called Phil Morgan. Um, he does ever so well here. And I was watching how he fish pellets, and it wasn't at all dissimilar to aspects of the way that Rob was doing it. So, what's different? Well, you'll see I've got a longer lash, and I'm actually flicking the bait past the feed. I think that's two key differences to how I would normally teach pellet fishing as a textbook method. To me, normally, it's much more about a tighter group in a bait. It's about putting your rig bang on your feed, following that column of bait from your kinder pot down and catching in that way. This, it's, I suppose it's more silver fishy, really. It's much more about, say, fishing slightly past the feed, through the water. And when you think about how the fish feed here at Allcroft, it makes perfect sense to me that Rob caught so well fishing like this. And fair play to him, I mean, I actually did a little video with him this morning. Um, you can see that over on the Catch More Media's members channel. We did a little run through on how he won the match, and that was so useful for me because... Oh, that was a good bite, I just missed that one. It was so useful for me because I got to see firsthand exactly how he fishes it. And as I said, it's a little bit different to how I've been doing it, so I definitely think there's something to be learned here. So the line between the poultice and the float, probably about two, two and a half foot in length. I say 416's dink, little tapered strung bulk pattern of number eights and nines down the rig. And that just lets you flick, flick the bait out, hold on to it and catch on the back edge of the feed. Now I've not been fishing long. Um, <laughs> I've had a fish every single put in on this since I started practicing. But as with all methods of fishing, Getting the feed in right is what we're really trying to do today. So I'm looking forward to having a little play with that. Now you'll notice that time I went out with a sprinkle pot, put some in, it looked like a little bite. But now we're getting indications, not bites, which tells me perhaps there's too much bait in the peg. I think when you get liners and not bites, you've perhaps fed it a bit too much. So I'm just going to tamper with the feeding today. See if we work, can work out how to get it right. And also just see whether, you know, whether we feel at the end of the session that this approach is better than the way I'd normally fish pellets. Because, as I said, I've had some good results on pellets um, at different venues. And everything, in terms of the way I do things, is a, is a fair bit tighter than this. A fair bit more emphasis on accuracy and putting, the, putting your rig in your column of feed. So... Let's just see how we get on. Like I said, really promising start, some good stamp fish. And uh, there's obviously a couple there at the moment, so hopefully it won't be too long before we get another bite. The other thing I've done today, which again is um, different to how I normally fish here at Allcroft, is I put a line in about four, well, three and a half actually, three and a half to four foot of water on a top fork it slightly down to my right. Now, there's a lad called Kev Baxter who absolutely dominates, um, or this year anyway, has, has dominated the individual league at the venue. I think he's pretty much won with a round to go, to be fair to Kev. He's got, I think, five or six section wins already. Probably five section wins, actually. He's got five section wins, a fourth, and he had a bad day at the weekend. But quite an incredible run of results. He's won two or three matches outright. And he's done that over the last few weeks by catching on that four-foot line. Now, I've tried it a couple of times. Never felt I've got it quite right. I don't want to ask Kev how he's doing it, because it's not fair. He's in a team that's sort of running us quite close in the league. So I don't want to go to him and ask him. But there's definitely something in it. He's catching bigger fish on it. It's worked here before. I remember the first year we came here, and that's going back four or five years, it was a brilliant method that year 
I actually remember Kev, my first ever match here at Allcroft, practicing for the league with the Catchmore Media team. Um, that year we sort of decided to commit to the campaign and came and had a go. I drew next to Kev and I had a great day's fishing. I had a big 30 pound. Thought I'd done really well until Kev pulled his net out and it got 50 odd pound. And again, it was that four foot line that day that did the damage for him. So we want to have a play on that. We've just fed casters and corn on that. Big pot of them in. We're going to have a look on that a little bit later. But as you can see, things are, aren't quite going to plan on this pellets at the moment. We've not got it quite right. We had a burst of three or four fish. Now it's gone quiet. So I'm going to give it another few seconds and then I'll be coming back and I'll be feeding again. And we'll try and work something out with the feeding on this line. Very, very interesting to see how the fish responded to data bait. So that will hopefully inform us. As normal folks, I don't believe in sitting on bad pegs. I've sat on the peg that actually won the match on Sunday. So there's no excuses in terms of the fish not being here. But I do know with pellets, I found it elsewhere. And talking to Rob after the weekend, it's very much about catching in spells. You know, you might have a run of bites for... 10, 20 minutes, then you might sit without a bite for the same period. So it is a little bit of a patience job, but we're having indications. Them indications have now stopped. I'm going to put some more bait in. Let's come back and do that. Right, folks, so all I'm doing, I've got a few expanders in a little bag here, and these are a mixture of the Cuttlebrook Koi expanders, which you can buy online, and ringers. And I'm, I'm sw switching between them, seeing which one I think is best. And I can't make my mind up at the minute, but that's normally what I, what I do when I'm pellet fishing. I take both and try and work out which I like best. They're my two favourites, really. I've soaked them in water, just when I've got here today. Um, and a little bit of Sensei liquid in the water. And the micros are just fishery pellets that I've, again, soaked in a little bit of the sweet Sensei liquid. So just to give them a little bit of extra attraction. Obviously, we sat there a little while then without a bite, so I'm really happy to now go out and feed again, because indication stopped altogether, so I know probably what's there has been eaten, because, uh, as I said, we were getting a few signs, then it stopped. So just tapping a little bit of baiting. And then one thing that's really been stressed is the importance of flicking that rig out so it's on a reasonably tight line and then it fall back into the column of bait. So, as I said, it's almost like kinky pellet fishing, we'll call it. Fishing a sort of strung out almost pattern. It's a taper, but it's almost like a strung rig on the back edge of your bait. It makes total sense to me. Like, well, as soon as Rob said how he'd caught, I thought, yeah, that's, that's different again to how... I fish pellets here a lot of time in the past. So Phil Morgan next to me the other day was doing something similar. I was lucky to beat Phil because he had a brilliant run early in the day. Caught a lot of skimmers, but luckily I managed to claw it back on the short pole. But after two hours, if we'd stopped the match, you know, he'd have been on a big double figures and he caught in a very similar way to this from what I could see. Definitely flicking his rig out past his pole tip. And there was quite a bit of line on his lash as well, so... This is, uh, oh, that was a little dink then. There we are. What's that? That's a skimmer. So we've fed and we've had a response. Very important as well. As I always seem to find out the first time I do a bit of kinder pot fishing with a sprinkle lid, keep your pot facing upwards as you come back because you don't want to be spreading bait all over your swim. Slightly smaller skimmer this one. Not like that big brown one we just had, but still that's, I'm going to say that's 12 ounces. So a good fish. And I'm happy because it proved my theory about that feeding. I think we had then successfully let those fish clear out that bait. And then we've gone back in looking at a response straight away. Up to the top lip. Absolutely lovely. Now, believe it or not, what I'm going to do now is go straight back in without feeding because let's get that landing net settled. Because I'm constantly thinking the same thing. I don't want to build up bait in the peg. I had that bite really quickly. There's no guarantees that what I've fed out there has been eaten yet. So 
if I was thinking I'll be sat for a while and I might want to sprinkle some bait in, what I'd probably do is fill the pot up anyway and just not feed it when I got out there, but I don't think I'll be waiting long, so I'm just going to go back straight out with a pellet on, just in the interest of getting back in as quick as I can over that little pile of bait before it all does get eaten. So we're out there, rig up, flicking it past. Yeah, and I'm quite happy actually with this approach. It's different to how I'd normally do it for sure. Um, but I'm looking forward to having a go at this in the match. For me, I mean, like, as I said, if, it, if I hadn't spoke to, to Rob, the lash would be half as long as this. There'd be a back shot much closer to the float. The bulk would be much more positive. It'd be strung over probably half the distance that Rob's got it over there. It'd probably be a lighter float, 414s with a little bite then, but I missed it. 414s float with a tighter bulk, a bigger shot, and it'd be much more about feeding dead accurately and putting the rig on it, not flicking it past the feed and letting it fall back in. This is what I more associate with ground bait fishing or caster fishing when you're trying to catch roach and skimmers, you know? But, hey, my most successful line here, or my most successful way of fishing at this venue is almost always short pole and caster or long pole and maggot and caster and this is exactly our fish with them baits so it makes total total sense and it's been a real eye opener as i said a bit of a shameless plug i actually got rob to show us what he does exactly and you can see that on the members area so see it from the horse's mouth on there if you want to or if you're a tight northerner like me as i said i've given most of it away Oh, right, that's a 10, 12 ounce, so again, so two good fish. Can we get a third? Let's try, just because we want to bottom this theory out today about the feeding. Because to me, with pellets, when it's mild like this, I'd be thinking you probably need to feed a bit more regularly and a bit more aggressively. Like in the coldest weather, I've had loads of success feeding nothing with pellets and catching, you know, lots of fish off very very little bait but i must be honest if i'd sat down today without any context i'd be feeding every putting i think it's a big lake i'd be thinking this is what i'd be what i'd be saying to myself i'd be saying it's a big lake let's pull them fish in but i don't think that's correct i think the evidence is overwhelmingly that this is the way to do it but i love the thought of it you know we're fishing on a silty bottom out there, it's not very nice, um, soft silt. So the last thing you want is too much bait in your peg because that causes you no end of problems. We've found that in all sorts of ways in the past. So let's just stick with this. This is good, I'm enjoying this. In a minute what we're going to do is actually feed that short line to have a little play on later. Tell you what, it looks like a little indication straight away again there. There might be one on that, but I'm not sure. I think you've got to be fairly sure there's one on before you strike, otherwise you would constantly be resetting your rig when there's skimmers in your peg. So I'm just looking for a lift or a pull under. And the biggest thing, of course, with any pellet fishing, don't strike a lift. A little lift up. Otherwise, it all ends in tears. Just plumbed up quite a nice sort of flat area about. So it's about 30. Oh, there we are, a nice little dink there. We know that one's on. But look at that, that's three good skimmers we've had off that one feed. So, my normal, as I said, catch everything approach, which has stood me in very, very good stead in the past on here, is to fish casters, six sections, which is just coming up the near side ledge. But what Kev's been catching is some bigger skimmers on it in slightly shallower water. I know how anglers feed this line here generally. I'm not saying I've got it dead right on this occasion. We'll soon find out. But that's with a bigger pot. So I'm just going to put on that that line where we're going to fish in after a couple of born pellets we can put one handful of casters maybe a bit more actually 
one and a half handfuls of castors and a little pinch of corn. I'm only putting the corn in in case. Let me see if I can show you what's in that pot. I'm only putting the corn in just in case there's any roach there, which there could well be. I want to change up about it if it's full of roach. I'm going to make a bit of noise and put it in. There we are. Be nice, I think there'll be some bigger bream on that. I'll add next to Rob um, at the weekend, brilliant young angler, Nick Brocklebank. He actually came second in the match and caught a lot of fish short. So it'll be interesting to see whether that works again for us. I'm back on with another expander. What I'm going to do this time, I am going to drop in without feeding again, but I do think we're getting close to the point where we'll have to feed now, surely. So I'm going to put a little bit in that pot ready. There we are. Right. I'm going to tap these in again and just flick that bait out. Let's just see. Banks here at all costs. A little bit tricky to negotiate with a long pole, since I keep knocking into the tripod behind me and all sorts today, because we've had a, a GoPro pack up, so we've had to... No, we're not going to feed, we're just going to keep that in the pot. We've had to improvise with a proper camera. Swing it out past, on a tightest line. I like this. This feels like we've learned something yet. I probably, I'll be honest, folks, I probably had a lucky draw at the weekend. So I did, I won't say I did well, I did okay. I was fourth in my nine peg section. I was definitely the wrong end of the section, though, so I managed to save a few points for the team. Um, that was on Mote Outer. Again, I had a good day on on the road, on Caster's Short. But a relatively low weight, you know, 23 pound, which for the venue this year as it's been isn't a big weight at all. So, let's just see. Now look, I'm thinking we've probably fished that bait out. We've not had a bite. Oh, wait a minute, I just said that, it just dipped. Is there another one there? Can we get a fourth fish off? No bait whatsoever. Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Eagle-eyed viewers will probably notice I've got a new side tray as well, and I've got a little attachment, which I think, long last, has solved my landing net problem. There we are, there's got to be a, oh, an indication then, so I do want to put that rig in again, without feeding. Yeah, I've got the feeder land tray, and I've got do these little blocks where you can strap a, an attachment onto the side of the tray, so I've actually got a Guru Reaper head in there, and that's about the best I've had it, I'd say, in terms of... Uh, being comfortable, so hopefully that's a problem solved. It's also a slightly bigger side tray than the Otbox one, which I like because it gives me a bit more room. I think there's a fish, either a fish on that or it's over one's back, got to be on that as. I'll drop a lift there. There's fish there. Lay it in again. That was a real lift bite, or unless it was a liner. one more or we'll have one more feed on this and then we'll drop on that that top four line because we're definitely happy with how this has gone and hopefully you've seen a bit of uh, of why it's so good as well as i said rob this morning did a brilliant video on it so for everything for all the details have a look on there now that could be either a great big skin or a carp i don't know the bigger fish i think that could be a, a non-counter. Well, I say a non-counter. Can't do actually count in the league here. Yeah? They count as a pound. So, Rob says he lost a few fish last week. Um, few carp, and he said he'd definitely step up to 010 if we were to fish it again. Let's just see though. It's not. I think it is a carp, or well, maybe not. It could be a great big green. It's either a small carp or a green. By the way, we're gonna need the puller kit, I think. Could be fouled up if it is a if it is a bream. I think it is. 
But again, it shows us still milling about over those tiny little array of particles that we put in there. It is a carp, that thing, or a big hybrid or something like that. It's a carp with nods of a head, a massive. Big old head nods. Only 09 fluorocarbon on here, and I'm not going to waste any time because. Yellow Ida is lovely though, so forgiving. <clears throat> the nice thing is with these carp, they're still in winter mode a little bit. They haven't totally woken up yet. It's a big fish, this, if we get it. Oh, I said that. I think he's woken up a bit now. I've got balanced gear, I've got half a chance. I don't want to waste all day playing a carp for you though, folks, because that's not weird to talk about. Here we go, he's coming. Give me a bit of... Oh! Oh, oh. squirrelling, folks. Well, anyway, as I said, we didn't want to stay on this rig. We definitely wanted to go on the short line. Thank God it's not Sunday, that's all I'm saying. Definitely set up multiple rigs if you've got a tree behind you time to change I think luckily we were going to anyway as I said um, this short line I fed it with about 100 and 120 mil of casters a few bits of corn in there as I showed you let's see if anything's settled over it I think that's what I need to work out about this line I need to work out whether I'm in the right depth I need to work out whether I'm feeding the right bait so I'm gonna start on one of my all-time best bream baits here at Allcroft double caster Got a 4x10 float on this one, it's an RW Maggie. Little strong pattern. Couple of back shots. And I've got two back shot grouped together near the float here because it's a little bit different to I'm gonna say how I do things out long in that on this we want to be dead accurate on that slope. So I'm just gonna use this back shot just to sink the float to so the float's got it. Let's just see if anything's come over that volume of bait. Now normally for me the short line here is fished at six metres. It's fished bottom of the slope or just creeping back up the inside slope. And now even in the carp matches here, this is a key line this time of year. They catch big carp on it as well, they catch bream on it. I was talking to a chap walking around actually. And he said he saw somebody, I think he said on Tuesday's match here or Monday's match. He caught not, he caught not so many, then he caught a load of big bream and carp on this line, 48 pound of skimmers he had, so that was a little indication there. We need to be catching bream though, we, we can't be catching roach on this. The awkward roach fishing, I mean, it's close, it's a little indication, so there's fish milling around the area, which is a good sign. Under the right fish. As I say, we've not fed any ground bait on this line. That might be the only thing that we do change, but I've heard whispers that casters, loose casters in a pot, is how people have been feeding it. And again, now what's that? That looks like it could be a bream. Double caster in that in that right depth of water. Oh, just a little dink on the float. Now the problem is, I'll tell you what I'm wondering, if it is a bream, it could be a perch as well the way it's fighting. Let's just make sure it is first. It's a perch. I'm not moaning, but it's not what I wanted to catch. Normally, if there's any other swim or any other kind of fishing, I'd be thinking, let's feed again. Perch normally means you've cleared your peg out of bait, but I don't know. I don't know. Should we feed again? Let's just try one drop in with a piece of corn on. Because corn's more selective, so we'll have a little, little go with this, and then we'll feed again and see. Single corn. If we catch a perch on this, folks, it's perch soup, I'm saying. Again, I'm flicking it down the slope, we're not feeding anything. We've fed quite a quantity there. I think one of the good things about this depth of water, potentially, is that you'll only get the right fish coming into it. That's why I'm sort of half open. And then we had that perch, but we didn't get any roach problems, any hold ups, anything like that. So. Maybe we can be a bit more aggressive with the loose feed. But you've got to be so careful, because you start lashing bait in here, that's definitely going to bring a carp, isn't it? So, 
what I want to work out is how to feed. And that looks perfect to me, set nicely. Trap is set. Let's hope that goes under the big brown. I've had days here, not so much on this line, but remember a few years ago, on the last round, I just fished pellets and corn back to back. And I caught some 30 pound of brown fish. They weren't the little hand sized jobs that you catch on other baits. It was much more of a patient, as indication, much more of a patient day. When I caught a fish, they were big. Maybe, I don't know, 14 or 15 fish for 30 pound. Indications on that float, folks. That was a bite. It looked like a bite. Had a little bubble come up as well. Would suggest to me that we can be a bit more positive in a minute. As I said, the nice thing is, as long as the stamp of fish when we catch them is right, you can afford to be patient on this. I don't know whether that just fell down the slope, and let's just see. I wanna, I'm having to fight to keep my hand out of that bait tub. I wanna be chucking casters at that. It's not right, it's not the right thing to do. Bring the wrong fish in, I think. I'm told it's much more about stealth. Sneaking a bit of bait in and letting the right fish settle over it. In a match situation, of course, we'd have the advantage that we could nip back out long, fish pellets for a bit, and come back on this. So if it doesn't go on doing five minutes or so, we'll have a little cut, and that's what I'll do. And then we'll come back in when we're trying this short line again. You don't need many on this. They are big when you catch them. I know that for a fact. Little lifts, little movements. Oh. Go on, eat it. Oh, damn it. Ever so weird. Very slow pulls. Got to be liners. I'm going to put the little caster back on. I just wonder if there's a load of skimmers there now eating all them casters. I've got to try it. This is interesting, really interesting. Not what I expected. I thought it'd either fly under with a skimmer and we'd catch it, or we wouldn't get a bite on it. But no, there's fish there and we're not hooking them. Maybe single caster will be, will be better. Let's try double one more time. That was a little dink as it fell, that was probably a roach. Way up in the water that was. Well, that's now settled, backside, just backside of the feed. It'd be lovely to have a day on this at the weekend, folks. If we could suss this out today. Is that a bite? Looks like one. It is a bite. Is it a bream? Feels like one. Oh. Are they there? 
Oh, it's got a carp. We've just seen a massive swirl over the line. Feels like a bream. I'm glad I kept my hand out of that bait tub then. I was about 10 seconds away, I reckon, from absolutely messing the job up. Another big perch. <laughs> I hope we got it sorted and we haven't. I'll tell you that, I mean, I've never seen a match one here at Orcroft with a perch, but they're not not to be sniffed at, especially in the dorsal, you know, in the peck, should I say. Can't be a load of perch there, surely. I'll tell you that, it is the time of year when perch show up for spawning. So there could be a load there. Are we fishing in too shallow a water? Should we have gone a bit further down the slope? It didn't pull up very nice. I did try to get in slightly deeper water, but it didn't pull up, pull up very nice at all. Lovely weather. It makes a change from the normal rain we've been having. The fish doesn't go under with a skimmer, folks, and we'll sign off for a little while, go back long and try this again. I don't feel like I want to re-plumb or move about just yet because I think I'm in roughly the right depth. I feel like you've got to give it chance to work. You can't be putting pots of bait all over the inside slope. It's just not going to work, I don't think, anyway. I think it is a little bit like an edge line. You've got to make them come to you on it. But again, I could be wrong. We'll find out on Sunday night. Hopefully it's close in the lead. We've got a slight lead. We just need a steady performance. If we can get sort of sub-15 points, sub-10 points would be ideal to guarantee it, I think. But sub-15, we've got a good chance. But, you know, we had we had a 20 points in this round, we had a 19 points. We've had a couple of real tough rounds, to be honest. So nothing is guaranteed at all. Standard of angler so good. Little indication, go on. That was like a perch bite. Looked like a lobby bite, that. I think there's a perch on that. Or it could be a carp in the tail. Or it could be, I don't know what that is. Probably be a carp, I think. That was a line off a carp, it wasn't a perch bite. So that's not quite right yet. I'm just gonna sign off for now then. I'm gonna refeed it. I'll do that while we're on the, on the, uh, on the phone on the film. I'll just show you what I want to put in there. And then I'll come back to that in 10 minutes. So I'm just going to put in... I'll put in a bit more this time. Two handfuls of casters, so probably... 100 and... Well, that's a 300 mil pot, it's a third, just over a third full, so. 100 mil of bait, let's scatter that in over a bit of an area. I don't think it wants to be dead tight there. And we'll come back to you in about five, ten minutes when I go back on it and we'll see if we can work anything out. Um, I'm giving it probably about eight or ten minutes rest. If this doesn't work, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just kicking myself a bit as I'm messing about long. I thought, really, to practice most effectively, what I should have done is gone straight back on that feed. So they told me if the skimmers have come straight into it. So I'm going to give it five or so, five minutes or so on this. See if we get a bite. If we don't, I'm going to feed again and just see how they respond to, to bait, really. Bait going in, shall I say. Let's just see. See, now I'm not getting no indications even on, on that feed. It'll be there somewhere. I wonder how... Oh, that was an indication. Just moan one on then. Or moan an indication. Be a bream, be a bream, don't be a perch. It's a perch, you can see it already. Oh. Three, four ounce perch. 
Do we need the corn? Let's try the corn again. Corn can be a brilliant bait this time. Absolutely love it. Rig wise on this, say it's a strong out pattern. Probably eight jury slip on this. Corn ten maybe. Plane going over. Let's feed a bit of corn. Can't really see. You can't keep the hand out of the bait. But I can't see how it can hurt. You know, we've got to try and pull something in now. We're at a time of day, it's about two o'clock half two now so we're at a time of day when you want this to be working right folks i've decided i'm making this my last drop in because this swim is just devoid i've had a couple of bream on it we're well after four o'clock now when you know the match would have finished half an hour ago and none of them fish came before the match would have finished all i've had on it is carp a little gudgeon a couple of roach it's just not been right. Either what I've done has not been right or the peg has not been right for it. But listen, I've been fishing this league for five years. We've always had good, consistent results. I've always treated it as a throwaway line, really. Dropped on it, in you know, 100 seconds. If it's not worked, come off it. That's what I'll be doing on Sunday. I mean, that's another fish, but that, I think, is another carp. Might be a bream. I think it's a carp. No, it's not, it's a bream. I mean, you can see now the stamp of fish. You catch on it. Look at that, that's probably... That fish is probably three to four pound, that bream. Like a Vaughan Canal specimen. You can see how you catch 60 pound when... Ugh, when you're catching fish like that. And that's the strength of the line. I mean, look, look at that. That's bigger. It's three times the size of anything we caught on pellets today. It's probably three, three and a half pounds. So, see why it's such a good. It might be bigger. It could be four pound that fish. It's huge. Weighty. Really weighty. So, I'll have one more drop in on corn. Lessons from today that more kinky way of fishing pellets is definitely definitely right i've enjoyed that that's taught me a thing or two about feeding and presentation with the uh, with pellets for skimmers what rob did um very happy with my expanders they stayed on well um tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do exactly what i did last time which is just feed a few bits of corn again we can't can't draw too much from today, from this now, because it's after time. So yeah, very happy with that. The setup for pellets was good. I enjoyed the longer lash, something I wouldn't normally do. I'll be doing that on Sunday. Probably on 99% of the pegs I draw, my long line will be pellets. Probably have a negative ground bait line and a pellet line as well. Obviously, short pole and caster, we've not done that today. Hopefully we'll get to see a bit of action on that on um, on Sunday, that's my bank area. That's normally what I do the damage on. So, if we get half a peg, you'll be seeing plenty of that. And this, as I said, I've not been happy with it. Um, you've just seen the sort of stamp of fish you can catch on it. So let's just hope that we're on a peg where we can do it, and and we'll treat it as a throwaway line. I'm looking forward to picking Kev's brains on Sunday night, as I say, folks, because I think uh, I think whatever he's been doing this year on this has been working a little dink there got to, got to catch you one more has been working really well for him so you saw then the stamp of fish you can catch but as i said it's a team match sunday if i can get bites put fish in the net that's all i normally do on this venue whether it's pellets long maggots over ground bait long or that short line. that's another big that's another carp there you see that's the wrong fish so yeah there we have it interesting old day and get this one in or oh, it's going to snap me probably snap me looking at that because it's going absolutely ham up that neck of the woods oh there we are we didn't want him anyway there we are folks interesting practice hope you've enjoyed it fingers crossed if we can do it fingers crossed for a good day on sunday
folks, just got back and I'm having a celebratory pint because that has been a great day. Um, really, really chuffed to win the league. Um, I think that's a brilliant achievement. We've won it every year we've fished it. Um, so made up with the result. But, and there is a but, um, if I talk about today's match on its own, just from a, a very personal point of view, I've not been entirely happy with how things have gone. I think I've drawn a poor area of the section. Um, and I've sort of got away with a mediocre result. But I think realistically, third in section was possible. So let me just run you through the day. Um, once again, I've got some footage of the match that I'll put in over the top of of um, me talking through it, basically. Um so, yeah, Bridgepool. I mean, this year it's been a really strange old lake that Bridgepool has. Um, and to be fair, it was the same last year. Very unpredictable. You never quite know what's going to be caught on there. Um, it's produced a match winner a couple of times this year. It's been, um, at times, especially on the island, some of the highest weights of the league have, have, have come off the bridge. But on other times, it's it's been a very tough um very tough lake to, to draw on. At the beginning of the year, we thought a lot of the reason why it was so patchy was to do with cormorants on the lake um, early in the morning, moving fish around. Um, I'll give you an example. There were times when the bowl area of the lake was absolutely devoid of fish. And up the arms, like for example, where I've been this time, were solid with small fish. Um... And there were other times, and, and for much of the winter this year, there's been next to no small fish caught at all on bridge. It's been a case of anglers sitting there and catching the big brown skimmers that, you know, Chris Greensides, who's won the section, and the old one next to him have caught. And it was as if there weren't any small fish left in there. And then, lo and behold, about a month ago, we had a match, and there were loads of small skimmers caught, and so, obviously, they haven't been eating, they just weren't feeding. So, it's been a proper enigma um, this year, the bridge pool. By far the most unpredictable lake on the complex. Um, but, hey, that's that's the wonder of the place. So, with this in mind, with this unpredictability in mind, I didn't really know what to expect this morning. Um, with the way the wind was hitting the bank I was on, I did expect the bowl to produce, and it has produced. Um, Chris Green size has actually won the section, and Andy Oldham next to him has come second from, you know, the pegs just sort of going into the bowl area. Uh, from my point of view, um, I wanted to hedge my bets because I felt my best chance of doing well from where I drew was a weight of smallish skimmers, probably quite a lot of fish for a decent weight. Um... Sometimes, obviously, pellet long is the way to go for these fish, but other times, um, not last round around before, for example, um, you can catch a weight of these smaller skimmers on the short pole, and I actually came second in the same section I was in today, from two pegs to my right, with, um, I think I had a big 20 pound of, of small hand-sized skimmers, short on casters, so I knew I needed to catch... Well, potentially I could catch some, some short fish. But I did expect that I'd need to catch all day those smaller stamp skimmers. And for that reason, the long pole would also be very important to give me something to keep feeding the net until the short line kicked in. Um, so I started off on hard pellets, on hard pellets, on pellets in front of me, feeding the fishery micros, which I've just soaked in a little bit of Sensate liquid. Uh, and water, so they're nice and fluffy. I actually did them overnight, so they were really nice and and and, and fluffy for the pole. Um, on the hook, just a, a four mil uh, Cuttlebuck Koi expander, again, which is just soaked in a little bit of the Sensate liquid. But the start of the match was slow. I wasn't terribly happy with how things went early, and that the Stamper Skimmers was absolutely tiny. Um, lots of fish of three four ounces and they weren't coming fast it wasn't like i was dropping in and catching one a chuck i was having to wait for bites i wasn't catching the stamp of fish that i needed to catch at the speed i needed to catch them to keep up with the people who were leading the section 
way up in the bowl to my right. But looking around my little area of the lake, I was doing reasonably well in terms of fish count. And, you know, as I said, so much of my success at Hallcroft has been down to that short pole line, catching on that in the later part of the match. I always think if you can tick over and put a few fish in the net nice and early, then, you know, you, you, you're often setting yourself up for a good finish. As long as you don't fall too far behind, you can always come back. So I wasn't unhappy either. And I certainly wasn't going to risk or change anything because I was putting fish in the net and those around me weren't catching. So the first sort of three hours, really, were just spent on, on pellets on the long pole. Um Feeding wise, I had to keep mixing things up to keep fish coming. Sometimes, um, you know, just sprinkling a few pellets in with a little um, sprinkle pot was best. Other times, I actually found feeding a little bit more was good. Um, just sort of clumping a few pellets in with a, a groove pot with the lid off, and then just fishing off the back edge of that bait until bite stopped and feeding again. So there was no hard and fast rules, and the stamp of the fish was was disappointing. I did have a really good run in the third hour doing something a little bit different. And that was just putting a maggot on a green gamma over the top of that micro pellet line. And I caught a dozen or so fish in that little spell. Yes, they were all small, same as all the others I've caught on that line. But bites came a bit quicker. So sort of rude not trying that a little bit earlier. Um, I had tried the short pole, tried the short pole after about 40 minutes. And again, after a couple of hours... But all I caught on it was perch, so I wasn't really happy. Um, I knew to catch a big weight, I needed that to come to life a bit earlier. Um, but it soon became apparent to me, I'd say after about the second hour, I knew in my heart of hearts I was fishing for sort of best of the rest, really. It just looked like Andy Oldham and Chris Greensides, their pegs were too strong. You know, they were catching and nobody else was. So I did feel that I needed to be sort of best of the rest. Um... And and that's the sort of result, as cliche as it sounds, that's the sort of result that wins your leagues like this because you can't draw section winning pegs every time and it's about not blowing out on them days. That's the key to effective team fishing in them situations. Um, I didn't have it quite right today and I'll tell you why in a little while. But um, yeah, you know, if you look at, look to the weights at the end of the day, as I said, there was a fifty-two pound Chris Green side, and the Oldham had forty-seven pound, and third in section was twenty-eight pound. Last in section was fifteen pound. So between fifteen and twenty-eight pound, that thirteen pound differential, you've got seven points at stake. And I think you know most people, if I'm being hundred percent honest most people could probably have got close to that £28, myself included. So I kept the net fed with that in mind. Um, and then it was not until about an hour to go that the short line really kicked in. I'm glad it did because I would have been up against it if it hadn't. Um, on that, I was just loose feeding casters. I've been loose feeding all day, alternating between a red maggot and a single caster on a hook. Um, on the hook. And the rig was just a... A 4 by 14 um, It was actually, I didn't use a county on this particular occasion. I used um, a float made by somebody called Tim Moores, which is a lovely strung out, a uh, lovely pattern for strung out caster sort of work. Jamie Hughes actually gave me a couple of these floats a couple of months ago, and they are brilliant for that game. A little solid bristle on them, and I soon had the skimmers really lining up on that line. Not massive fish on the whole, the sort of 10 to 12 ounce average. I did have one bonus three pounder, which proved very, very useful as well on that line. Um, moving into the sort of last few minutes of the match, um, I had a little bit of a frustrating end. I lost a couple of skimmers right at the end, which did my head in because, you know, I just had a feeling that every fish were going to count and, and, and them fish were going to cost me. And so it proved, you know, they cost me a point, those fish. Why did I lose them? Now, losing skimmers or losing fish generally, I always think um, there's a number of reasons for why it can happen. It's not always as easy as you think. Now, I'm not going to blame the tackle I've used because I've caught so many fish on the line, the hooks, 
the floats I've used that I'm mega confident in it. Um, it'll be to do with the feeding. I suspect what's probably happened is I fed a bit too much trying to push the peg in that last hour, knowing that's my chance to catch some fish and do a weight. And I probably had a bit too much bait in the peg, which means your bites aren't as confident. And I did have a couple of fish that I landed hooked around the mouth. So I've probably just over-egged it slightly in the last 20 minutes, which, which could have proved costly, to be honest. Um, it did in terms of the section points. You know, I need another few ounces for um, another point. They've had, had 24 pound, I had 23, 12. Um, and that would have put me fourth in section. And there was somebody else who beat me by a narrow margin. Ah, uh, yeah, Sean Stockley. Now, I... I don't think even with those two fish I wouldn't have reached Sean. He had £28, pound, but it's getting me up there. It's getting me up there. I did, as you'll probably notice through the video, change how I um, fished in terms of elastic setup. I started off on Yellow Hydro thinking that um, probably the fish would be slightly bigger and feeling slightly more confidently than, than they were. And then I downsized to a number four elastic, which is what I've used all winter in the hardest conditions when fishing with hooks like green gammas. I did think this week could be a bit better. Wasn't, so back down to a single four on that short line. So, as I said, it's the same setup. Single four elastic, um, green gamma or F1 pellet hooks. I've tried all of them because I did lose a few fish today. Um, but it was fit the feeding and the way the fish were feeding. You know, there weren't a lot of fish down where I was in comparison to the rest of the lake. So, yeah. Um, I think I probably just fed a little bit too much trying to push the peg a little bit hard in that last stage of the day. Um, what else could I change to uh, push the £28 I needed for third? Because I do think that was probably possible. The only other thing maybe I could have done is fed a negative ground bait line as well as the pellet line, which might have seen me catch a few more um, fish in between quiet spells on the pellet line say for example I'd fish the pellet line as I did with maggots on the hook for a lot of the day and had a negative ground bait line to alternate between those two lines that would have put me close to £28 I think by the end so there's things I could have done folks to get myself another couple of points today I'm sure of it um, and on the day we're only one point off winning on the day as a team Obviously, we won the league overall any, anyway, fortunately. Um, but, yeah, not not a perfect match. And I'm sorry once again that the actual practice I did on that lovely peg on Moat Island proved pretty fruitless because Bridge is a different animal to Moat. And, um, yeah, it's been quite kind to me the last couple of times I've fished at Bridge in that I was second in the section two matches ago, as I've said. And then the last round... Um, sorry, no, it was three rounds ago I was second in section. Two rounds ago, I actually won the section on bridge from the other side. So it has been kind to me. And I felt I have got things sorted on there to an extent. Um, but as I said, it's just proved such an unpredictable lake this year. Um, maybe not quite got it as sorted as, as I thought I had. So, interesting match. We had a storming team draw on paper. Then he actually put the paper on the table this morning and said, game over, and he and was right in that we had a couple of, you know, really strong pegs on moat. Matt's peg is where Rob Swan won the match from on the last round, where I practised, obviously, in the first part of this video. Matt's had a lovely day. He's caught a lot of fish on the short pole on pellets in the last stages of the match, six metres you know, fishing micros and expanders and the early part of the day is just caught on that long pole as I did practicing again feeding micros and fishing an expander and he's had what I think is probably the best weight I've ever seen come off Hallcroft in, of silvers and that was £75 so an incredible weight from Matt Denty he's been the end peg on Mo Outer towards where the fish have been in the bowl and again brilliant angle on a brilliant peg He's had an incredible weight of £68. You know, these two, Denty and Matt, are, I think they're the two best anglers in the country, to be honest. And two weights like that, you know, yes, I think most anglers on the league 
would have done very well off those two pegs. Would they have caught £68 and £75? Probably not. Frighteningly good. Um, and Geldar, you know, he's been mega consistent all league this year. And again, he's had a brilliant peg just coming off the point on Bridge Island. Um, really consistent area. And again, he's had a brilliant day and comes second in the section with a big £30 weight. So, um, Denny said to me this morning, he joked that I got the worst peg out of the four. Um, I probably had, but let's be honest. You can only be honest with yourself. It was worth third in section today. I've come fifth. Um, should, should probably have done a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, that's the honest truth of it. But listen, I hope you found this quite interesting. I've certainly found it um, a really interesting match today. Um, as I said, I'm sorry the practice I but it couldn't have been of more use. One of these times we'll get it right. Um, thanks for all the nice comments you've been giving me on these videos. It really does mean a lot. I really enjoy doing them, as you can probably tell. Um, and I think if nothing else, it helps me to analyse my fishing and really drill into where I'm, I'm going right and where I'm going wrong. And that today was far from a perfect match. So thank you for watching. Any questions, just get them in the comments and I'll do my best to come back to you. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.